up everyone, and welcome back to the North. Today we start a new series completely on a game called the Iron Oath, which came into early access earlier today. Uh, it was developed by Curious Panda Games and published by Humble Games, as you can see in here. Uh, the demo was available for a bit. Uh, I did try out the demo not too long ago, and it did seem very fun. For anyone who doesn't or hasn't heard of the Iron Oath, the Iron Oath is a mercenary band building tactical game, which in the north we're very used to, our Battle Brothers and War Tales. There'll be a few very similar things in this game, which you, you, you'll see similarities, but they are also quite a lot of differences. Um, the whole mercenary band building, the character customization is there. Oh boy, is the character customization there. Uh, I'm just going to set this up whilst I'm talking. Um, there's quite a lot of portrait and like, people have legs in this game. In Battle Bros, they don't have legs, so that's something we're going to have to get used to, people of the North. It's very strange. Um, I am just going to call us the Northerners for this one. I won't call us the Knobs or anything because, you know, that is for a different playthrough. Uh, I think it's going to be easier just to get into it. There is a prologue mission, which was effectively what the demo was. I am actually going to skip past it. Because uh, I want to show off the rest of the early access and just cut right through. Um, it does effectively skip you to the camp part after the underground part. People who have played uh, the demo will understand what I'm talking about. I'm also going to change why, am I? Uh, and then once we've got that, then we've got to go to the city. And then it all sort of opens up quite a bit. So, I'm going to quickly change the flag sigil. I There's no, like, um, Viking helmet, so I will change it to the only helmet. Make it white, just like the uh, channel. And if there's a blank color and a red, I believe there is. That's like almost a perfect red. And I'm gonna make the title. So in the demo, I uh, I changed the fam just for a laugh, and it actually made the game quite ridiculous. But since we're in North, and since where I'm from, I'm gonna change it to Arkid. So Arkid, people who don't know, is Arkid is technically like a slang for a brother, maybe a sister, uh, even like a uh, child or a friend. You call your friends our kids sometimes up in up in north. So that's what we're going to be called. That is our title, our kids. Anyway, that's us set up, Northerners. That is the flag sigil. We're going to skip the opening prologue and we're going to play it on Iron Man. Because playing on Iron Man, I'm not going to go fully straight into the highest difficulty. I am going to play it on Battle Hardened just because it is early access, so they're still tweaking it a bit. So I don't want to just go into full highest difficulty insanity and then just get absolutely plowed to sundown uh yes that is a term now so without further ado so effectively these differences i'll show you so you start with less money there's tougher enemies you get less time or the time constraints in dungeons is a little bit different and injuries recover at a slow pace there are like temp and temp injuries and age is a thing it's gonna be easier to get into it let's just get into it okay so we're in the camp uh, the prologue is effectively you're in a dungeon and you're retrieving some goods that you've been set out to. You've got a friend who is on the verge of retiring, basically, and this is his last time to be with the uh, group of you before he goes off on his merry way. That's effectively the uh, summary of the tutorial prologue part, effectively. Uh, and Vaughn is the person who's retiring. So all eyes are on Vaughn as he steps atop a nearby crate with a drinking hand, raising his voice to pierce through the ruckus. Another quick point as well. People who don't really like uh, listening to text or reading a lot of text, probably not going to be as big of a fan because there's a lot of text to get through, at least to begin with. So I am going to be talking probably quite a bit for the start of the game. But don't worry, the combat is coming and then we'll have a look at the rest of it. So Vaughn, now you all know I'm not one for lengthy speeches, but I'd just like to say it's been an honor to fight alongside each of you over the years. I dare say that I even consider some of you among my friends. He grins, met by a chorus of laughs and cheers. It hasn't been an easy road, but I've been a fortunate man. Not everyone gets out of the mercenary life on their own terms. You can say that again. I hope you all one day get the same chance. He raises his cup in a toast. To you, me friends, there's never been a finer company. Ear, ear. We don't pronounce H's around here. The crowd responds with a burst of applause and cheers, enthusiastically raising their drinks and sending a shower of ale through the air. Your gaze is met by Vaughn as he points his cup towards you, and you nod your head in friendly acknowledgement before turning about and striding off to find your tent. With celebration continuing, you brush aside the flap and settle inside, discarding your weaponry and toshing it 
near your bedroll. You turn to find Alaric in your presence, no doubt eager to discuss business. So Alaric's like your second hand. He's like your right hand man, effectively. Hope I'm not disturbing you, Arkids. I was on my way to pay the horses a visit and prepare us for tomorrow's travel. Yeah, say, so being called Arkids is going to be fun. It's probably best if I stored these vials in one of our carriages. You gently slide the pack off your shoulder and place it in his upturned hand. Well then, I'd best take care of this. He nods respectfully and turns, pushing aside the tent flap. You turn your attention to your desk, its surface covered with disorganised papers and maps, illuminated by the faint glow of a candle. Point up a stool, you sit down and begin to pour over one of the maps, charting out tomorrow's course. From outside, the sounds of laughter and poorly played music drifts into your tent. After some time and celebrations winding down, you step outside your tent and into the cool evening air. Van approaches your side and mounts atop a horse. There is a trace of sadness in his eyes. Time, man. Aye, man. Got me saddle loaded up. Figured I'd sneak out of that making a fuss. He rises from his seat and dismounts. Just wanted to say thanks, boss. For everything. You jester. You jester. You return the gesture with a smile, gripping his hand and giving it a firm shake. Any chance I convince you to stay? He steps back and chuckles. Nah, man. If you had asked me last week, maybe. But this last job cleared any doubts I had. I survived this long. Reckon I'd be a fool to press me luck any further. Fair enough, friend. We'll always have a place for you if you change your mind. You hear a shout and turn to see Yurik stepping towards you. His, new, his young nephew in tow. Sorry to interrupt, but Gedrick here wanted to see you off. Is that so? I know we haven't finished your training, but your uncle's more than capable of finishing the job. I know that. But I'm gonna miss you, though. Aye, and I you. I've half a mind send him with you. Less of a danger on a farm, and God knows your old bones can only use the help. Ha! There's a few good years in me yet, but you're both welcome to visit any time. He exhales deeply, stealing a glance towards the road. I'd best get going, then. Take care of yourselves, would you? Aye, he nods farewell, turning towards his horse, and hoisting himself into the saddle. Clicking his heels, the horse trots off, and you watch him disappear into the dark at night. Illuminated only by the moonlight above, you and Yurik glance back at the sound of approaching footsteps to find Torin wedging himself between the two of you. Company won't be the same without him, I'm afraid. Indeed, it really won't. As Yurik and Torin take their leave, you look around camp, surveying the aftermath of the festivities. Aside from a few inebriated men and women who remain slumped, it seems that most have turned in for night. With days of travel yet ahead, you think it's wise to follow suit. Time for bed, chums! But wait. You bolt upright from your sleep, awakened by the blares of a horn from somewhere in your camp, an alarm being raised, the sound of a frenzied battle all around you. You scramble, taking up a nearby sword. Alaric burrs into your tent, an or orange glow briefly visible behind him as the flap is flung aside. Our kid, we're under attack! Winded, he takes in a few deep breaths. There was no warning. The horses, the carriages! He raises his hand, trembling with frustration. Everything's been taken! We need to regroup with the others. Have you seen Yurik? Alaric wipes the sweat from his brow. Couldn't find him, but with his nephew, I'd hope. You meet Alaric's eyes and nod. With a firm grip, you step past him, reaching your other hand towards the tent flap. You glance over your shoulder. Let's move, stay close. You emerge from the tent, head on a swivel as you attempt to survey the situation. The camp is almost entirely ablaze. The heat and smoke stinging your eyes and obscuring your vision. You make your way ahead, your feet suddenly catching on something as you fall forward and scramble to stay upright. Recovering, you steal a glance backwards at the obstruction. One of your companions, dead. An arrow flies by you, narrowly missing, but finding the target nonetheless. Alaric screams out in pain, legs collapsing under him as he falls hard. You turn back, reaching out an hand to pull him up, but he waves you off. Leave me be, I say! I'll be no use in the fight, go! You turn and continue onward, staying low to the ground, eyes scanning. Not 50 yards ahead, you spot four of your companions through the haze, huddled together with weapons drawn against an overwhelming number of assailants. Sucking air into your burning lungs, you urge your legs forward. A figure suddenly appears from the corner of your eye, and with a flash of pain, the world goes dark. Thwack! Ouch, Charlie! Surrounded, Sigbert's head whips around, searching frantically for any possible escape as the raiders edge close. Beyond the ring of enemies, Torin and a few others face emerge from the darkness with bloody weapons drawn. What are you waiting for, Torin? Help us! The raiders eye Torin as he confidently taps the him, each seemingly unconcerned by his presence. Sorry, friends. We'll make it quick. Traitor! Absolute traitor. 
Jesus. Eri! You damp trees, have you no honor? Horin scoffs. Honor achieves little in this world. I trust you lot can handle the rest. Spare no one. I'll be off then. Like a scoundrel. Okay, here comes the combat, everyone. Hope you're ready. So, it kind of works as sort of like a hexagonal pattern. Everyone has like a different class. As you can see, there are like three different classes that we've got access to at the moment. If I right click, I believe I can get onto it. No, I can't. We'll get to that in a second. I am going to get everyone into position. I believe... Who have we got? So we've got... Rosalind, thank you. Rosalind Caldwell, who is a guardian, who's very much to do with faith and shields and swords. Uh, we have Clodomir Cook. We can change all these names in a bit. Stormcaller Novice. There's a lot of magic in this uh, mercenary game, which is actually quite a nice change because you don't really see magic a lot in, like, War Tales and Battle Brothers and so on and so forth unless you've got mods. So this is going to be quite fun. You'll notice they've all got ages as well as they do get older as we go and they may have to retire or die from old age. Very interesting. Uh, and then we've got a pugilist, which is effectively like a monk, as you'll shortly see. Now, it says fight to the death. But I know for a fact you can survive this. So let's see if we can make everyone survive, because I would like to keep everyone around. I will add that to Clodomir. I'm going to activate a shield. I assume that's going to increase her weapon strength. I don't think these guys can get close enough to do anything except maybe the archers. Yeah, so the archers go do damage. Also to her, she's going to activate the shield now. Now, with a Stormcaller, he has certain abilities where he can use Electrocute. He can do Arc Lightning, but there's not really anyone stood next to each other. Because with Arc Lightning, you can hit a primary target and arcs to all adjacent targets for 75% damage. Which is pretty swish, swish. Whereas, Conduit is a target single enemy attack and then deals massive lightning. So if I do that, for example, I could absolutely obliterate this guy. But I'm actually going to move and see if I can just straight up kill... Oh, he's hidden behind cover. So there is also like a cover mechanism in this game as well. Similar to this guy. So if I actually want to do some damage and kill one outright, I'm going to blow, bone apart, blown apart this guy. My pugilist is going to go in and start slapping hands. Fist of Fury, he is going to muda, muda, muda over this guy. I'm going to stand there and attack him. But that's effectively around. But since he waited his turn, he can then go straight away once again. Is that enough to kill him? It's not. I'm just going to make sure this guy definitely dies. Once again, Fist of Fury, dash to an enemy empty cell and strike an adjacent enemy twice. So I'm dashing to this cell, then hitting this guy twice. This is the initiative of the above, as you can see. Uh, you can also see that Slice Attack will add bleed, so that's what Hone does. Let's see. So, good thing as well that gets explained in the prologue is there is sort of an attack of opportunity thing, and if they're within range, they have to leave. If they leave your area, very similar to other games, they will have to take an attack. So, if I put our, I can't remember her name, Roslyn here, and attack this jabroni right now, he will not be able to go and attack anyone else, which is absolutely fine. I mean, our stone call is going to pop off in about three seconds, and it's going to be glorious. Watch as that guy crumbles literally into nothingness. He's also a healer, which I'm probably going to have to use in a hot minute, <laughs> as it were. So he can do... Oh, it's a shame they're not close to each other, otherwise I could do, like, Arc Lightning. But it's not going to work. So our Pugilist goes next, so I'm going to lock her down with a Pugilist. I'm going to put our Stormcaller, I believe he's called, here, and use Conduit on this Marksman, so he gets eviscerated very shortly. Our Pugilist will then go here. You see that these little blue dots, this is how many times you can use it. So I've got one more use for this, and I will use it because it's a pretty amazing move. And I want to take her down as quickly as possible. And then we've got Roslyn, who is on half health. She is a little bit injured. It would be good to heal her. She's a little bit tankier. I am going to heal her. I am going to heal her. That way she's going to be able to last out all these hits a bit more. Whilst we deal with these other two idiots down here. Nice. Ooh. Look at that go. Okay. Now, annoyingly, I could arc lightning, but it will hit Roslyn. That is the one downside of, like, chain attacks. They can hit your own people. But I can weaken this guy up a bit. Ooh, but he crim. Fantastic. 
how much damage is that going to do? That's only going to knock back, which will become useful in some fights where there's, like, areas in the map where you can, like, knock them down. Ooh! Good old thwacking. And let's hopefully finish this guy off. He's out. You're also stuck against the Pugilist. He is injured. And if we're not careful, the Pugilist could go down. So let's eviscerate this. Fantastic. Nice one. What we got left? So if I, for example, you're next straight after him. So if I go here, Crescent Wave Kick, and then push her in. How much health have you got? 280? I think you'll be okay. And then lock him down. Oh, you missed. I think he's still locked down, though. And defended. Very good. So you can go into Tall Glass, Grass, so it lowers your accuracy, but increases the evasion. So if you stay in Tall Grass, it's less like a chance that you can hit, but there's also a lower chance that you will hit as well. It also helps you avoid any attack of opportunity. But I'm not too worried about that right now, because it's got to kill this one guy. So it shouldn't really be... Too much of an issue, I don't think. Come back here. I can't use this anymore. There's no really point kicking him in because it will end up probably, I assume, hurt her. So I will just do a regular, a regular old kick and then she can finish eviscerating him. Everybody survived. And nobody took any injuries, which I'm actually quite surprised about. I will take that bandage. It will stabilize injuries if I ever need it. And keep that. Nobody leveled up. That's fine. You'll see the levels here. You also notice they have recovery time, so whilst they're in recovery, their damage and everything is, is not as good. And they also have their own, like, reputation levels that you have with your own people. So it's all different depending on your actions throughout the game, and that will change person by person, which is very cool. Right. What do we get? We got no loot, that's fine. Gear is durability has gone down a bit, that's fine. I'll close that. We'll move on to the next part. Opening your eyes, you find yourself sprawled on the ground with a mouthful of dirt and a throbbing ache in your head. Despite ringing in your ears, you can hear a muffled voice calling out. A hand grips your shoulder and you jerk at the touch, clawing at the ground and scrambling on your back. Easy now! You exhale with relief at the sight of Yurik. The early morning light shines upon his blood-splattered face and garments. He straightens up and you grab hold of his extended arm, gripping tight as he pulls you upright. Regaining your senses, you look out of the smoking remains of your camp. Anything not taken by raiders has been taken by fires. Damn. Not much left, is he? The bastards took everything. It was Torin, our kid. He betrayed us. Torin? Are you sure? He nods. Wasn't alone either. Damon, Inos, Nira. All fucking traitors. Through the anger, you notice his sadness and realize suddenly that his nephew isn't present. Where's Gedrick, our kid? He glances down, slowly shaking his head. Don't know for certain, but I fear he's dead. I was with him when the attack started, we ran into trouble. I told the boy to run, but don't remember much else, I'm afraid. Woke up to Alaric dragging me out from under a pile of bodies. Alaric's alive? Is there any of us? Ah, he's alive. Managed to find a place to hide and patch himself up. I told him to stay off his feet. But he's out there limping around, trying to salvage what he can. Thankfully, there's a few of us too. Seen they managed to kill a whole group of the bastards. I'm afraid that's all, though. You don't see Alaric emerging from a half-burnt tent limping your way and being helped along by the other survivors. A really smile forms on all their faces at the sight of you. Gods were glad to see you, our kids. Have you shared the news? I did. He fumbles inside his coat. I found some correspondence in one of the tents. They've been planning this for months, it seems. Rosalind mutters under their breath. Traitorous bastards. Any idea who they were working for? I'm afraid not. Certainly more than just a ragtag group of thieves. They were too well armed and too well organized. Eric's Yurik scoffs with disgust, leaning though to spit to the ground. Group of cowards, ass here. Easy to achieve victory when half our troops passed out drunk. No doubt Torin and them were counting on that fact as spineless pricks. Never did like Torin none, always felt uneasy around him. Alaric furls his brow. I can hardly stomach the notion, but could Vaughn be involved? Not a chance. I know he and Torin got on well enough, but a man's as loyal as they come. I'm just glad he wasn't here for this, we've lost too much already. Regardless of who's involved, there's little we can do, at least for now. Aye, so what's our plan, boss? You know we'll follow you anyway, but I promised my sister I'd look after Gedrick. If he's somehow alive, I need to find him. And if he's not, well, us putting those traitors into the ground will have to suffice. Alaric puts a calming hand on Yurik's shoulder. The boss is right, though. With little choice, it matter. I understand you want vengeance, so do I. 
but without the manpower or the means to seek it right now, and doing so would only get us killed. If we're going to do this, we'll need to first restore our numbers. Then, I promise, we'll hunt those traitors down. You look around, renewed purpose, and the all nod in agreement. Right then, with best travel lights, it's a long walk to Andalon. It is indeed. So, navigating the other world. As our caravan travels throughout the world, time will progress. Supplies and general upkeep can be expensive, as we know from other games. And every day that passes will cost us coin. Everyone needs to be paid. In the top right corner, here we are. Our navigation controls allowing you to advance to the next day. Stop travelling and adjust the speed of your caravan. Given the situation, we can't afford a long journey. We should make our way to the city of Andalon to rest and regroup. It's only here, so it's not too bad. Notice that time is going by. There is a years, uh, a year marker and a day marker. Like I said, people do grow old and they can retire and die. We can make camp. We can stop moving if we're currently traveling, or we can do travel speed. Uh, I will quickly show off the map. So we've got like the east here. You can toggle the borders of the region and also who controls it. So this house, Jorston. This house, I'm probably going to butcher these names. Telerion or Teleron. House Athera. And House Vo. Laros, which is sort of like, yeah, well, it's like the south region of Battle Brothers, but it's more like the east, the southeast, I suppose, I guess, like Kent, no, not Kent, not quite, uh, you've got obviously you've got all the um, main capitals of each house, and then there's also a few which are, like Wielden, which is currently in ruins. The once great city is a little more than ash and its survivors have taken up residence. Perhaps it will be rebuilt someday. So the towns can get destroyed and then get rebuilt over times. And I imagine they can also get taken over by other houses possibly. But don't, don't, uh, uh, take my word for that. We'll have to see because I'm not 100% sure. We always saw a bit from the demo. I will quickly show off the roster, and I'm going to use one of them examples. Let me look at Sigbert Broadsteer. And if I go to this little wrench here, we've got the name changes, we've got the pronouns, we've got the bases, we've got the backgrounds, we've got the faces, we've got hair, eyebrows, eyes, scars, facial hair, ooh, I'm just going to change his hair colour a bit, uh, tattoos, apparel, how he looks in the actual battlefield, it's fantastic, like the depth of customization is great. I'm going to put it out there like I do with every one of these sort of playthroughs that I do. If anyone wants to get involved and be a character, obviously in this game is classes instead of backgrounds. So we've only got three currently, but there's a few more classes at the town that you'll see. Um, if anyone wants to be a particular character, let me know who you want to be, like your pronouns, what you want to look like. Give me as much detail as possible so I can create you within this game and you can become part Northerners, man. Be one, of my, be one of my kids, our kids. They've got traits. They will affect dialogue. Uh, they will have ailments at some point. If they're fatigued, they don't do as much damage. They're not as happy about it. They get less XP. That's how much they pay. That's how much they're happy, loyalty-wise, with you. And these are the general attributes. You've also got their gear. So, for example, Sigbert is a pugilist. So he's only got cloth wraps to throw his hands. Which I assume are rated E for everyone. And then you've got his cloth vest. Because, very similar to Monk's. They have less armor, but they do have, like, I assume, like, a lot of decks, you know? If we're going through, like, D&D 5e sort of style. And then you've got the ability tree, which we'll get into when we actually start leveling up. And they are different, as you can imagine, for every single one. You've also got the bio biography for everyone. I don't know if you can actually change people's biography. If I, like, change the name, I don't think it would change the actual uh, biography as well. I don't see anywhere which edits it. it. You might be able to. If I clicked R to customize, no, there isn't a customization for uh, the biography. Not yet, anyway. Maybe down the line. Maybe down the line. So you've got your roster. You've got your inventory, storage. Not really much there at the moment because we are, you know, sack all poor. We have our reputation and it's separated between the houses, the cities, and the factions. So the factions are quite separate to the actual houses and cities because you've got the Vanguard Keep up here. You've got the Pyramid of the Divine here, and then you've got the Circle of the Magi down here. So that's a little bit separate to the actual houses and the city-states. The Council itself is on the roadmap, and it's a bit further down the line for this year, as I believe the Early Access is going to be here for 12 months, at least, as they, like, sort of figure it all out. But I think, like, the first update is sometime around spring, which we're already in spring, so we might get an update kind of soonish. Um, the roadmap is attached to 
the community page on Steam, so if you want to go check it out, feel free to go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description of this video below, just so people can access it. And if you want to buy the game for yourself, uh, feel free to check that out on Steam. Uh, in the UK, I know it's $14.99. I'm not sure how much it is uh, in other countries, unfortunately. I do not know that information. But I'm sure you will if you click on Steam. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got our general company upgrades as well. We don't have any company perks available yet, so we can't upgrade anything. Uh, and we've also got the company history. So how long it's existed, how many coins it's earned, how many missions it's done, the general achievements, also the history, which I think is really cool. Like, there's like a little bit, it's all just sort of there. It's like a, a compendium for your uh, group. It's really cool. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to Andalon. I'm sure you're all getting a bit tired of me talking a bit, so let's get walking. Go, go, go. There's also like a contract page as well. Obviously, currently we've got the campaign, we've got the open contracts. Every single game starts with this opening. There's no like flat opening where it's just like build a company, choose the four people you want to be in it, and just go sort of thing. I don't know if that's something they're going to add in the game down the line, but this is how it always starts, as it were. This is the setup. Okay, so we've got Andalong, we've got the information of like the house of who it is, how our relations are with the house and the city separately, the status, the root. The ruler, the location, so on and so forth. We've also got the roads are active with trade, saturated the city's market with wealth and goods. The such thing may attract those with ill intent. Interesting. Let us enter the hist city. Just like that, after many long days on the road, you and your companions breathe a collective sigh of relief upon entering the city limits of Andalon. The streets are bustling with traffic, and though it does seem to be business as usual, you can't help but sense an uneasiness among the people. Yurik seems to pick it up on it as well. The day is growing darker, that's for sure. No doubt they're all concerned about the Scourge. I can't say I blame them. If, you hi if there's any, like, white les, you can just highlight them. Or white words. And it will give you a brief uh, description, which is actually super useful. Because there's a lot to remember. There's a lot to remember. On the bright side, there'll be no shortage of work available. For now, he winces. We could all do a few days rest. I would agree. I believe the inn is this way. Continue. So there are, as you saw there, there were a few different buildings we can choose from as well. The inn, the marketplace, the infirmary, and then just leaving. With the morning sun shining into your room at the end, you rise from your bed. Please find your body finally free of its many aches. Morning, Arkid. You're looking a sight better, eh? Come on, sit and eat. Across the table, Alric tears off a piece of bread and hands it to you. We were just discussing our next. Alric trails off as a man approaches your table. Your previous employer, Caldwin, sporting a puzzled look upon his face. I must say, I'm surprised to see you here. Heard about the battle. Heard you were dead, in fact. Yet, here you are. Heard it from who? Your associate. Uh, Torin. That was it. Tall bastard, he was. Said your entire company was killed in an ambush, and they was lucky to be alive. Anyway, he brought me the vials, so we concluded that business, and he went on his way. You just believe his story? Truth be told, no. I could tell he was hiding something, but I wasn't about to refuse the man. I suspect he could rip me apart with his bare hands were he so inclined. Was there anyone else with him? A boy of 15 years? The man scratches his chin. He had a few companions, sure. From what I saw. Not that young, however. Any idea where they were headed? I don't know that either, I'm afraid. But it seemed they were each going their separate ways. Alaric raises an eye at the piece of information. Retiring, perhaps? They certainly can afford it, having stolen everything from us. So they betrayed you and stole your fortune, did they? I'm sorry for that. But perhaps we can help each other out. You have a job for us? More of an arrangement. I've been looking to expand my business across Kalem. Kalem is like the known world, as it were. It's the entire world. But the roads are a dangerous place, as you well know. And I'm in need of a permanent guard. In return, I would offer you a discount on all my wares, potion, elixirs, and the like. I'm sure they'd be of great use in your line of work. To be clear, I would not interfere with the operations of your company. Of that, you can be sure. In fact, I care not where we travel, just so long as there are buyers for me to sell to. So what do you think? Sounds like a fair proposal. I can accept the offer. He smacks a hand down on the table. Excellent! And consider me at your service, my friends. As I said, where we go is entirely up to you. Works for me. Alric lifts his hand, a single finger raised. There is one problem, however. We simply cannot afford to travel anywhere at the moment. Not to mention we are without carriage or horses. You certainly had a rough go of it, no matter. I can supply both horses and carriages. As for funds, I heard the local vanguard have their hands full at the moment. I suspect you might find some work with them. 
Just don't mention my uh, other activities. You might be none too pleased to learn the vials in my possession. That's it, Tip. We'll go and see him. Calderwin rises from his seat, straightening out. I have preparations to make, then. I will await you at the gates. Taking a bite, you look on at Caldwin. Strides out of the inn. Alric turns back, fingers rubbing. You know our kids. I was thinking it might be wise to retire the company name, so as long as those traitors think us dead. We'll have an easier time rebuilding our numbers, and when we're ready to strike back against them, it'll be us with the upper hand. Yurik grunts in approval as he swallows. He's right, I reckon. Best not to draw any extra attention if we can help it. Any idea for a name, boss? Aye! The Northerners always had a nice ring to it, I thought. Mainly because we're all from North, innit? The Northerners, eh? Aye, I believe that'll suit as well. Continue. Nice! So, it'll give us a few tutorial things as we go when we hit new stuff, even though we're out with a prologue. There's always something new to learn. Uh, when visit a city, you can view available contracts. By clicking on one, the icon on the banner tells you which faction is offering you the contract, and completing it will increase your reputation with them. Rather than in a position to be picky right now, I say we take whatever job the Vanguard, who is this little sign here, have to offer us. So we're going to talk to these guys, and then I think it opens out into going to the inn and hiring more people and getting all sorted and so on. So we'll go to here. I'm going to follow it as much as I can for the time being, and then it will open up when a certain thing happens, I believe. Pick up some work from local Vanguard representatives. So 550 gold or crowns. What do we call it? Is it just called gold? I don't think it says. I actually don't think it says. It's been called crowns so basically every other... Uh, it just says profits. Oh, joined a thousand days ago. Oh, I find it interesting that it also tells you how long ago it was. Very cool. Ah, oh, man, this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. No, it doesn't say what it's called. I assume it's just gold, then. I'll just call it gold for the time being. Anyway. And 155 rep. Rep. Represents. Hey, soldiers, let me through. My apologies. Things are rather tense around here. As you can tell. Is this something you need? We heard you could use an hand. Uh, as an understatement. Be heard correctly. I'm sure you've noticed the day is growing darker. They say the scourge is coming. The scourge is basically like a semi end of days which happens every now and then that people have just got to deal with, basically. Uh, it's the dragon accompanied by demonic hordes from the void returns to the mortal realm, attacking cities and inflicting the blight upon their inhabitants. Which uh, it gives me a real um, reminder of Dragon Age and Darkspawn. Um, which is pretty cool, because Dragon Age 1, 1 and 2 and 3, to be fair, were also all pretty fun games. Um, just me hankering to play them. Anyway, it's already begun. We've been receiving increasing reports of Void Spawn, like Darkspawn, in the area, and we're scrambling to respond to each. Any help you can provide is most welcome, and will be recorded, of course. What do you need? A group of refugees are fleeing. I dispatched a unit to aid them, but with the number of Void Spawn that was reported, I feel their presence won't be enough. So we've got to travel south, link up, and ensure the refugees arrive here safely. These will point you in the direction. Good luck. I have no doubt you are suited to the task. You can count on us. Accept the contract. And there it is. Looks like we've got a work cut out for us. Before we start, might I suggest hiring some fresh recruits to the inn? I'm sure there are more than a few capable mercenaries here available. Aye. Not a bad plan. Oh, kid, not a bad plan. So, every city has an inn which allows you to rest by drinks or recruit new members. So, recruiting new people for... The group, resolve, well, not resolve, well, yeah, I suppose resolve when buying drinks makes everyone a little bit happier, and rest and recovering so people aren't fatigued, and they are well rested so we will fight to their full capability as well. So, buying around for the company will increase their loyalty, but drinking too frequently can result in adverse effects, as you could imagine. Make sure I need a new members for your roast so you can scare the local town. Yeah, yeah, this is effectively what I just said. Okay, cool. So, let us recruit, as they are highlighted here, you got some three people here, so let me see who we have. This is a list of all the available recruits. As time passes, new will appear. You can view information on each recruit by clicking the icon. Well, I'll probably aim for people who we don't have in the group already. So I'll aim for different classes. So I'm not going to get the pugilist, for example, because we already have a pugilist. Saying that, though, we've also already got a guardian. We don't have a Valkyrie. Blessed by the Nuren god Viz Vizimir or Vizmir. Valkyries are formidable shield maidens who excel on the front lines where they can be best protect their allies. I'm pretty sure they can fly. You look for the recruits, I'm looking for some work. What do you think about these terms? So you can hire them at different rates, effectively, depending on how you expect them. So you could just pay them for the year, or you could pay them per year for five years with 50 sign-on bonus. So you could have them for much longer, for much cheaper down the road. But for the time being, I'm just going to keep for a year. 
and then see how it goes after that, see how well she is. You can go in and see like what she's like, so she's a fitness freak. So peak age bonus is now increased to 5. So the older they get, obviously certain attributes will drop because they're getting older and older. Uh, so stuff like toughness and stuff will go down with age. Whereas I believe like stuff like wisdom and things will go up with age, I can only imagine. But we'll see how that goes. Brave, Fortitude, Workhorse. 25% less fatigue incurred from expeditions and stubborn. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that. And also she's got a defense increased by 10. And she has just a pitchfork. Very much a uh, first level Valkyrie it is. I am going to take her though. I will take her for one year. That's great to hear. I'm looking forward to working with you. Here, here. And then I will hire... So we've got a Guardian who that one per... We've got, already got these people already, to be fair. We've got one Guardian. We've got one Pugilist. Guardians are quite handy. Although, ooh, she's got a different ability. Interesting. She's got Holy Barrage. Deals damage to two targets in a row. Subsequent targets take 15% less damage. Very interesting. Heavy-handed. Workhorse. Accuracy is by 10, but crit is increased by 30. Wow. And also a fitness freak. Everyone's a fitness freak, apparently. And then you got Walton Young. Fitness freak. Harsh. Harsh and cowardly. No, we don't do that up here in the north. Ingel, you are in. Once again, I will just do it for the year. And if they do end up being good, I will then, assumingly, sign them on for longer. You're in. That'll do for now. Uh, how much is a round? 60. Go on them. Everybody drink up. Your troops appreciate your kindness. So... As you can see, it all goes up a little bit differently. Everyone's loyalty is a little bit different. Your funds are running low. You need at least 300, 634 to cover the cost of paying your company contracts at the end of a year. Whew! Yeah, that's, uh, that's something we're going to have to deal with. But I think everyone is all nice and healed up, as far as I'm aware. So let's get out of here. We can go to, I think it's G. Yep, G. So everyone is well rested. So, well-rested buff is 25% extra XP and 5% power. I would say that is pretty good. I mean, you got available, available. Ready for duty 46 days until he is well-rested. That's fine. So, available is, like, the baseline, which I will definitely use. We don't need the infirmary. I don't think we really need the marketplace right now. It's a bit early in the game. So, let's leave the city and do our first contract, which is down here. It'll take 13 days, so let's just get a wriggle on. The distances between places is a bit more stretched out than other mercenary games, which is why the years will roll by a lot faster, which means people will age and retire and die much faster. After days spent on the road, you begin to lose hope. So long as they're stuck on the road, we should be finding them soon. One way or another. Up ahead, a figure suddenly emerges through a patch of trees just off the beaten path. They barrel towards you, frantically waving their arms. Please help us! A caravan's under attack! I don't know why everyone's northern. I'm going to have to throw different English accents in here at some point. But I'm not very good with other English accents. They glance in direction. Faint sounds of combat barely audible over the panic screams of refugees. Are the vanguard with you? They are, but they're outnumbered. We should hurry. You twist in your seat, signaling the rest of your companions to follow you charge ahead. Locate and assist the vanguard. Yes, we shall. You arrive just in time to render aid. Berwena and Sigbert grapple a demon away from one of the soldiers, cutting it down in the process. The remaining demons are felled in short order. As one of the vanguard soldiers tries to re wrench their spear through the demon's skull and acknowledges your rival. Removing his helmet and tucking it at his side, he marches across the bleak grass towards you, a wary grimace on his face. So the vanguard are like an ancient order that deal with defending the mortal realm against things like the Scourge. And they were apparently established during the Dark Age of Tian, the first king of a now dissolved kingdom of Kalem. So Kalem used to be a big whole thing, and now it's been separated and fractured. The Vanguard have garrisoned all across Kalem with a main headquarters situated in the Northern Hold, as we noticed earlier. I take it you've been sent to help. There'll be more of them, of that I'm sure. An officer from Andalon hired us to assist you. That's a relief. We were too few to begin with, truth be told. It's a miracle we haven't lost anyone yet. Still, with your help, all these folks might just make it. But here they come. Sir! More demons, fast approaching. Shit! You go there. You there. Go in, refugees. We'll hold these bastards as long as we can. We'll protect them. Good luck. Soldier nods and slams his visor down. He's ready to play ball. He whips around, drawing his spear and barking orders. Ah, this guy's an absolute chad. Can he come with us? No? Ah, oh, protect the refugees and flee at us then. Right. 
Let's be off. Lowering his spyglass, Alaric mumbles something under his breath. He turns to you with a slight shake of his head, a troubled look. They're still following our kid. More of them, in fact, at this rate they're gaining. I suspect they'll be over us by nightfall. He digs around in his satchel and produces a map. There's a cave system not far from here that'll take us closer to Andalon, and hopefully provide a shelter from these demons. A cave? I'd rather stay above ground than get trapped underneath it. No guarantee of safety down there. It's not ideal, but it's a risk we'll have to take. Sigbert turns away, grumbling inaudibly as he stomp off. T Typical Sigbert. Appearing beside you, but when I place a reassuring hand on your shoulder. Can't please everyone, our kids, but I reckon it's the right choice. We've no idea what awaits us down in these caves, it's true. But we know damn well the danger we face up here. Well, let's get down there then. Right, we need to assemble the party so we can have up to four characters when forming the party. And it's good to have well rested people. Available is fine, obviously fatigued and lower is much worse. I'll have Yurik, because we didn't actually get to see him in the, because uh, you actually get to use him in the prologue. But you don't see him unless you play the prologue. Uh, I will use, ooh, 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 who am I going to use? I will use the well rested novice. Because she'll be a little bit better off. Uh, Clodomir, and then I will pick... I guess I'll probably pick Sigbert. I would probably pick Bowena. No, you know what? I'll pick Bowena. Just because uh, she's well rested. And we get to see what, how the Valkyrie goes. So, unable to retreat. We need to find the cave exit. And the mission length is medium. Into caves we go. We're off dungeon crawling. For entering dungeon, you'll be able to purchase provisions to bring with you. By default, unused provisions at the end are refunded for 50% of the cost. This amount can be increased with company upgrades. So we've got a campsite which we'll need to use throughout the uh, cave system, which we'll see in a minute. People who've already played the demo will understand what we're about to go into. People who haven't, it's uh, it's quite interesting. I actually don't mind it. It's uh, very interesting how it works. So I will take... I don't want anything else. I'll take a bandage. I'll take two bandages, actually. Uh, I will take a small health potion... Thought they'd stack to be honest. I'm gonna get rid of one of those. I will take a tool. You know, I'll take a bit of everything. I'll take a bit of everything. Sally forth, men and women. Standing alongside the cave's entrance, you motion to the wary refugees as they file past you. you Encourage them to quicken their space, their pace. We are inside. You look back at the planes one last time, frowning at the approaching void spawn, now clearly visible. Could have been demons, but I can't say for certain, not the work of any human, anyway, at this place around here. Regardless, we're obviously not alone down here. Let's tread carefully, then. So, it works a little bit. So, we've got this time modifier, where every time we move, it will go up a bit, and then different, uh, uh, like, not fatigue, but, like, different... Uh, Status effects, that's the right term, will happen to us. And we can move, we can scout, we can camp, and then we've also got the legend, which will tell us which each of these are. So I'm going to go left, I think. Now, I can scout, but it does take up more time, and the longer we're here, the worse we become. So I'm just going to jump down to begin with, and then I will scout. It does give us a bit. There is a combat there, but since we're aware of it, we're not going to get surprised in any way. So let's rock and roll. So, deployment phase, deploy, de during the deployment phase, you're able to reposition your party, so it's literally, I can just move around within these little, like, empty hexes here. We've got some disgusting looking things. It's going to be a hell of a time, let me tell you. Ooh, I'm very excited to see what she does. Okay, let's rock and roll, shall we? Got to be careful, we are playing a uh, slightly higher level. So let's get up in there, and we will do Holy Barrage. It will deal damage to both of them. That is sick. Now, Buena is corrupted, I believe. So we'll inflict 10 moral damage to the occupant on their turn, lasts for three rounds. So what we got? So we got Skewer, targets two cells in a row, dealing piercing damage of a single target two cells away, they'll be pulled forward. We've got Champion's Order, grants target 50 cent tower, and one movement for one round restores five morale to herself. Well, I could just go Spear Thrust. I might just go Skewer, though. No, I'll go Spear Thrust for now. Oh, missed! That's not ideal. Good thing you can heal, right? Right. 
I am just going to load up a conduit just to blow her apart. And then we'll have Yurik come up. Let's have a quick look at Yurik's skills. We've got Infernal Pillar. We've got Return to Cinder. Mark a vacant cell with a Fire Trap. We've got Blazing Lance, which is damage a single adjacent target and apply burn. I'm going to bring him up here. Whew. Oh, it's going the wrong way. That would be a damn. Can't go there. If it's like out of the faded, it's like dashing. So it's like using your uh, action to move further. I right, will burn him. Oh! You stabbed his guts outside of his body. Missed. What are you up to? Crutzer again, but Burwena is going to dodge it quite well. I don't think you need to heal just yet. I suppose you could. No, you know what? Oh, you missed? You're almost dead. Let us... Skewer, you're out of here. Nay bother. You can heal next turn, and we'll get Yurik. Is Yurik, isn't it? Yeah, it is Yurik. Ooh, Infernal Pillar. Whew. Why not? Let's show it off. Which would be more useful if there was two people there, but in this case, you're going to blow up, aren't you? When's his turn? Right, everybody get out. Get out, get out, get out. Uh, there's not really much point. Uh, just guard. So, guard increases defense and evasion by 20%. 25% for one round. It will end the turn. Which is fine. Uh, go down there and heal yourself, please. We should be able to move out of the exploding range. I don't know if it's going to kill him straight out, though. Or if it'll just, like, you know... Do damage to him, but he'll still be alive. So I'm just being actively careful of that. No, he, he, he literally killed himself. Okay. Works to me. And we got a bit of uh, XP for everyone. We got some health potions, some bandages, and some demon's blood. Grim. Okay, off we go. Let's keep going, shall we? Careful. You see how this is going up? Now we're on 11 out of 16. So moving only costs one, as far as I'm aware. We're getting pretty lucky here. Oh! Every time I jump, I'm like, oh god. I'm, I'm actually going to scout. It does take a bit more. You see it's got 16 now. And we have a higher win experience. Even the bravest soldier is not immune to traumatic. Increases post-mission fatigue. That's what I mean. Time modifiers. We explore the application of various time modifiers. So I say status effects. They say time modifiers. That's fine. Will present new challenges for you to overcome. With each time modifier applied, your party will slowly become unnerved and suffer a small loss to morale. Due to these factors, it's important to be efficient and spend your time wisely, which is what I'm trying to do. So that is a different one. So what is that? A conversation, I would imagine? I imagine it's an, oh, it's an NPC. Let's go have a gander. As you continue through the dark passage, Alaric shores alongside you. A lot of tired souls back there, Arkid. I think it'd be wise if we found a place to make camp for the night. We don't want anyone collapsing on us. Our own crew, least of all. I'll consider it. Cheers. Mecking camp. During longer mission, it, missions, you can make camp in order to rest your party. Apply various bonuses. Camping does not cost time, and instead resets the meter to zero. Some areas are safer than others. We should pick a spot where there's fewer points of entry. I'm not going to camp just yet, but I will do it soon. That's a fight. I'm going to do this fight and then maybe camp. Let's figure out how the hell to get to get out of here. What is up? Right. We want to put the heavy hitters in the front and then the squidgier people in the back. So we got first. So we've got Ingelt. High tree. We'll do a holy barrage to kick things off. And then we can do squidgier. Push champion's order. Grants target 50% power in one movement. Yes, that's what it was. If I did that, I could stab one through. Watch this. I'm going to pull it forward. Ah, that's going to go the way I didn't want it to go. Eee! And here's the difficulty. Oh! Jesus, bleed out and injuries. Injuries can occur from critical hits, so when a character is low on health, if the character sustains an injury, you can use a bandage to stabilize them and prevent their injuries from worsening. 
Bleed out. When a character's health drops to zero, they enter a bleed out state, and their health value will be replaced by a bleed out pool. This pool is persistent throughout the course of a dungeon. The bleed out pool will drop by one on their turn, and from attacks suffered, permanent death will occur if the pool is depleted. To recover a character from bleed out, you can heal them with provisions such as a bandage or a health potion. So we've got to get to work, basically. Up you get. Okay. So. Annoyingly, can I get... Can I switch? I can switch. What I'll do is this. Cat, eat this! Fabulous. Now, there is fire there, so we don't really want to go there. We do need to get her out. So if we get her here... Oh, she's going to take... Yeah, that's on me. That's completely on me. Didn't even think about the... Uh... It's about the injuries. Can I not use these? Can I not just straight up use these? I also can't... Click it. I really... Go there. Ah, there we go. That works. Nice one. It killed itself to power up someone else. I can live with that. And you just... You just touch fire. You're gonna die, mate, aren't you? I thought you would die. She is not having a good time. Let's say that. Huh? Okay. Set it up. Knock him down. Just straight up kill him. Unfortunately, you can't get out of there. So, heal. God, I'm, I'm evidently still learning how to play the game. <laughs> and then we'll just do a regular... Good old stabbing. God, she is knacked. Everything's fine. And we got level ups. That's good. So there are six attributes to put points into. Physique, finesse, toughness, conviction, insight, and mind. Although one, obviously, they'll vary depending on the class that that person is. I'll get to this all this stuff in a second. We don't have to do it straight away, but, I mean, it would make sense to do it just because, you know... We're in a dungeon currently. So you'll see that the star ones, these are the main attributes for that class. So that is what I will go for. So I'll confirm that. Yes, I'll spend the ability points as well. So if I went to, let's say, Conduit, this is the big one we're going, we could change the range, we can reduce the channeling time. I would like to reduce the channeling time, actually. And then we've got one more. Don't think I can unlock any of these just yet. So I will do Arc Lightning, and I will do Potency. Yeah, sure, why not? Confirm that. Did anyone else level up? I don't know if they did. Don't believe so. I'll find out in a second. We need to fix we need to fix up old Ingel, because, oh boy, she is not having a good, a good time, to say the least. I don't know if we can actually go into... I think we can. Yes. I have to go Bandage. So now they're being treated. So they're bandaged. Are they both bandaged at the same time? They're both bandaged at the same time. Okay. So that's not too bad. But it does mean that she's going to be kind of out. More or less. For the rest of this fight. Okay. Let's just, car let's just sally forth. Oh, hello. What's this? You come across... You come to a narrow corridor with an iron gate bar on your way. Despite the rust and the apparent wear, you're unable to force it open. There must be a key around here somewhere. So I could find a key, or I could use tools to pick the lock. I think I'm going to use the tools that we brought with us to pick the lock. With focused eye and nimble fingers, Clodomir fiddles with the locking mechanism. His expression is soon shifting into a smile. Now obviously that has knocked up the time, so the foes are now well aware of your presence and prepared accordingly. Increased chance of ambush and remaining encounters. So the plus, this plus effects and negative effects to doing certain things. I am just going to scout. And this has only got two areas to go. We've got 7 out of 16. Let's scout. Interesting. What's this way? Scout? Dead end. Well then, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to camp. Because there's only one direction the enemy can come. So we've only got a 10% chance of risk. Okay, so once you've established a campsite, you can select various incenses to burn that provide healing and other unique benefits. 
More incentives can be unlocked in the company upgrades tab within the management menu. To decrease the chance of your account being interrupted, you could place it to two members on lockout. Each lockout will increase the interrupt chance by half. So, let's have a look. So, we've got disrupt chance of 10. We can modify the incense, which can do certain things. That'd be quite cool. So, restoring vitality would be decent. Recover HP by 50, 25%. Secondary effects. These wrestling receive secondary effects of incense. Or you could choose, like, a different one, for example. Incense points remaining. 10. So, if I use, like, I don't know, mend wounds, it would then go down to 5. But, I mean, we've already got injury stabilized, which does have bleed out. I don't know if that changes, per se. And then we'll also restore stamina. Close that. We'll have Yurik on lockout. I think five percent is safe. I'd like to. I'd like to think, you know. Begin. And then that goes back down to zero, and we can end the camp. Everyone's a little bit better off. Okay. Let's get a wriggle on. Oh, I guess I can't scout it because I know what's there. I assume this is the way out. Okay. We better keep... She's got... She's at full health, to be fair. She's just a bit knackered. So she doesn't have as much dodge, and her melee attacks do less. So I'm going to bring her back slightly. I'll bring her back a little bit closer than that. Uh, Yurik can deal with these jabronis, and Clodomir can go with there. But why not can go there? Ah, uh, she does always go first though, which is always a bit of a bit of a problem. Well, that's guard for now. But why not? If you would be so kind to deal with that dread knight, it's got a dread knight. That's a crit. That's a good start. And now he's locked in with Burwena. Oh, what is that? Pull of the voids. Stop whipping my friends, mate. Hmm. Just go ignore that's happening, you know? Could you blow this flare up, please? That'd be great. Thanks. Now, if I move with Yurik here, this flare will get a chance. But I can use Infernal Pillar, which doesn't actually do that much. So instead, I'm actually going to mark a trap. The target who steps on the fire trap will take damage and be pushed away. So I'm going to plop it here in the hope that this anguish moves forward, you little bastards. So, are you chained to the area just because of that? Yeah, so the void is pulling her in. She can't move. Well, that's pretty crazy. Fair enough. I guess we just guard for the time being. Skewer does, what, 137? I guess it is worth doing, I suppose. So, that one's almost dead. She is taking bleed out damage. I'm a little bit worried about our Valkyrie. That one is eviscerated. Oh, God. Everyone, stop whipping all my people, man. Right, I need you to go down there and help out. Ooh, that would... As, as good as that would be, it would also hurt her. So, you know what? Get the conduit ready. Ready to explode. You still can't move due to that. I don't really know what's down there. If I go, uh, I have to get rid of it, right? I see. Just guard. Stay up. Ooh, still there. Did he just steal health from his best friend? Well, he's not best friend, but you know what I mean. Burn him again. Nice. Not as nice. I assume he's about to blow up anyway, so that's fine. Let's try and finish this guy off. It's going to miss, unfortunately. We are going to go and heal her up. Nice one. And then, Skewer probably won't finish him, or it. No, unfortunately not. That's fine, to be honest, because I can just do this. See ya! Oh! Oh, what the... That was amazing! What was that? Very cool. Okay, I can't move. I guess I'm just gonna keep slapping this guy. 
He's going to blow himself up. That's the question. He's not going to blow himself up. Interesting. So who needs a heal? Who needs a heal? Who needs a heal? Everyone kind of needs a heal. There you go. And then we're going to move up. God. We're also going to move up. I don't think he'd hit anything from here without hitting Yurik. So I guess I will aim for the old explosion. Because I'm pretty sure this might be the last fight. Are you burning? I'm not happy about it, are you? Not happy at all. So a torn unit is forced to attack the source of a torn. Yeah, okay. Well, let's heal up. Uh... You got 314. You got... Wow, Yurik, you've got so much health. Have some more. And then, actually, give him Champion's Order. Gives him a bit of a boost. And now, should be able to finish this guy off. Done him. Absolutely done him. Good job, team. But when I leveled up, I'll give her... So, Conviction is Defense and Morale. Finesse, I will give her one of each. And I will go into Skewer. Single adjacent enemy can now be pushed away. I'll go. For, I'll just go for damage. Flat damage. And then for Champion's Order... Which slows additional 5 morale. 10% power, just the general power boost. A flat would be pretty decent. Ingal, who's a guardian, will go with conviction. Insight is critical damage protection. I'll just go for two convictions for her defense. I do really like Holy Barrage. Ooh, bonus target. I'm going to do bonus target. And uh, I'll go for 10 speed for one round. Radiant Dawn generates two Radiant Stacks from the Guardian's passive ability. I'm not entirely sure what Radiant Stacks do. So I'm going to go for Invigorate for the time being, just to increase the speed. And I'll find out what the uh, Radiant stacks do eventually. Passive Radiance. After using three abilities, the Guardian's Holy Conviction showers a random adjacent ally with light, cleansing their negative conditions. Oh! Very cool. One to remember. Alright, let's get a wriggle on. I believe that is the way out. Oh no, it's boss fight. I take it back, but it's not the way out. Haha! <laughs> Oh dear, this could be bad. I mean, yeah, searching that's not going to help. It's still a boss fight. Right, let me see what I can do to the people before we go into this, because it's going to be pretty brutal. 314, 339, 364. There you go. Uh, I assume that's not going to work on her, or him, for that matter. Yep, I know. Let me get. Let me touch something else instead. Bandage that, that's grand. Your bandage, that goes down a bit. Bandage you a bit, so that goes down a bit. That takes time. Damn. You've noticed that the traps here seem to be more sophisticated. Fortunately, I don't think we're going to be bumping into any traps now. Just the big boss. Alric fumbles. I do believe we're nearing the exit arcade. On the other side, Yurik's arm suddenly juts out. Do you see that? A dark figure looms ahead of you. That is no ordinary demon. Oh dear. What do we got? Ah, Spooky Ghost. Spooky Ghost. Spectral Weeper. And then Spectral Soul piece Piercer. Alright. Edgy of the Edge crew coming through, apparently. Alright, Clodomir, come here. We might end up losing someone here, because we're not in the strongest of uh, positions right now, you could say. Stand there for a sec. I don't know if that's going to work. It might do. Didn't do anything to the ghost, unfortunately. I assume the ghost is going to keep moving. Yep, can't reach us just yet. That's that's fortunate. Come here. The uses are out, which is annoying because I thought we were going to be done. But I guess not yet. Not yet. Oh, boy. That's not a good... That's not good. Right. Explode that Spectral Reaper. A Weeper. I assume the Terror means we can't go again. But why not? I am hoping for the best for you. I really am. Too terrified to do anything, which is a shame. That guy is going to move around. Ooh. Very close. Very, 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 very close. Kill that one, please. Right. Nice. Now, this one's not really, not really much point attacking that one. Really. It doesn't really do all that much damage. The anguish thing is like 
He's got so much health. It's crazy. Uh, we're out of conduit, but I do have arc lightning, which would be good. But the only problem is the arc lightning does hit our guys, like I said before. Right, so let's go. Holy Barrage isn't really going to do all that much, so I guess we'll just slice it a bit. Where are you going? You're surrounding Berwena, who is not having a good time. So guess who's get he getting healed in a second? Nice. That's taken out two of them. That's pretty decent. Right, if I go Arc Lightning, it's going to hit literally everyone. It'll hit literally everyone. Probably a solid idea not to do that. <laughs> uh, I can switch with Ingel. And then do Blazing... Infernal Pillar, sorry. And smash them both. Set that one. Oh, dear. Well, we know what that means, don't we? Do we all get to go before that happens? I do believe we do. Oh, right. Healing as well. That's unfortunate. Do I kill it beforehand? Does it still explode, I wonder? Oh, dear. Mm, this isn't good. This is not good. Kill that one, please. Yurik, come here, please. And pick her up. Is she going to survive the explosion? She is, but she's also had her, like, basically blown off. Man, this is brutal. Faint ray of light can be seen up ahead, motivating everyone to quicken their pace ever so slightly. You pause, you round the next corner, your eyes adjusting to the dim light. The refugees behind you all breathe, though all are well aware that the journey is not yet over. Beside you, Ingel clamps a hand down on your shoulder. Never has grey skies brought so much relief to handle on them. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get out. Let's get out. Man! Way more injuries than I was expecting, but can you imagine what this would be like on a second? On the highest difficulty. Oh boy! So grab all that. We got refunded for that because we finished it. We've got a bit of gear to deal with. We've got a lot of demons blood to take. Great, I suppose. And we are out. You emerge from the cavern. We've done well, our kids, against all odds. And Elon is still a few days out. But I suspect the worst is behind us. Let's collect that reward then, shall we? Okay, well let's get critical injuries. But when it needs to seek treatment for their critical injuries. If you don't treat these injuries, they'll get worse. Some injuries can lead to death if left untreated. Compound femoral fracture. 30 days. Oh boy. And Ingel's got a broken elbow. Whew. Okay, back to Andalon. Which, we'll get to Andalon. We'll say a few things, and then we'll probably call it. There you are. With all the boys spawn crawling around these parts, I was beginning to fear the worst. What of me men? They fought valiantly. Bought us time to get away. Gain two to Vanguard Keep. Ah, respect. I see. Never gets any easier sending soldiers to their death. But you've kept these people safe, so at least some good came under sacrifice. Come, we'll come up here to Andalon and get your payment sword. There's another matter we could use your help with, but we'll discuss that later. You return, following closely behind the contingent of Vanguard soldiers. Things are likely to get worse soon enough, but for now, everyone in the company is grateful for a moment's rest. Right, let's get now, nine days, let's get to Andalon. And... First contract complete, I do believe, by clicking this in. Please come in, we have much to discuss. You took a sight better than when I last saw you. You are well rested, I hope. Not really. We still have a need for your talents when you're feeling ready. The damn scourge is just beginning, after all. He turns his signals to an assistant. But first, there is a matter of your payment. You've done a great deed to us. Many have you to thank for their lives. What was we agreed wrong again? 550? I believe, yes. Very good. So the next matter at hand, then. We have recently made aware of a nearby void breach, and a party I dispatched in response has yet to report back. Our forces are already stretched thin trying to stifle the void spawn, so I was wondering if we might employ your services once again. We're here, what do you need? I know it's as much. Reports indicate that the void breach... The void breach occurs when a rift opens between Mortal Realm and the Void, yes, I imagine it would be. It's finger points. Thankfully, it is underground and somewhat secluded, but until it can be closed, it remains in danger, nonetheless. The Scourge has thrown more than enough demons and wraiths our way already. Oh, he gives us a pouch. A little gift, courtesy of our allies in a circle. Once you've located the breach, toss this in and it should destabilize. Makes sense to me. 
The contents are highly volatile, so take great care. Alright, so don't mess around with it, is what you're telling me. I can I can live with that. I'm just gonna go, we won't let you down. Glad to hear it. One last thing, I know you're short on numbers, so it may serve you to visit the inn. No, no, we, we know how it works now. Don't worry, Mr. Vanguard Officer. Just thought I'd mention it. Fair enough. So you're rewarded with both renown and reputation. Renown is a measure of overall fame, whereas reputation is with, like we say, with the towns, the cities, the groups, as it were. Yep. Contact to make certain reputation will change coinly. Yes. We've acquired another renown point, Arcade. We should look into some upgrades for the company. So we could do one upgrade now. Our reward is fish. Ooh, yes. Do a little a bit of fish, says uh, the Smeagol of the group, I suppose. And then we can actually use these, I imagine, to upgrade the rust capacity to 10. Reduce the salary cost of mercenaries by 10%. Reduce the rate which loyalty is gained or increases traveling speed. I think I'm actually going to go traveling speed, you know. And that's the first level in. I would like to apply the upgrades. Everyone's a little bit critical, so we're going to deal with that. But I am going to leave it there for now, because this is a very long episode, I've already realized. Um, I do kind of want to make a series out of this. Anyone who's interested in getting involved and being part of the roster and just generally wants to see a series on this, feel free to let me know in the comments. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the rest of the channel. I'm sure there's a lot more in there you'll enjoy. Feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing a whole series on this. And always feel free to keep an eye out on the next things we do in the north, be it here, Battle Brothers, and so on down the line. But that is ciao for now from me, me northerners. Catch you next time.